Welcome to the Father's House in New Iberia, Louisiana. We believe your best days are just ahead of you. Whether you're joining us in person or you watch us online, we invite you to be a part of the TFH family. Thank you again for joining us. God has an awesome plan for your life when you discover all Jesus has provided and step into your identity as a child of the Father. Enjoy today's message. So this morning we are starting a brand new series, Will Power, Will Power. And uh, I believe the Lord's going to open this up. If you are like, oh my gosh, here we go again. We're going to hear how we need to tighten our bootstraps and get going. No, we're going to let the Holy Spirit empower our will through this. Let's start with Philippians 2.13. If in your Bibles you want to, you can turn to uh, Romans chapter 8. I encourage you, while we are, you may have some things you're reading, your own devotionals. A lot of churches start a reading plan. Uh, While we're on this series, I'm going to ask you if you would study Romans chapter 8. It coincides um, much. We're going to stay much in this chapter if the Lord says the same, as the Lord says the same. Uh, for what he's going to open and reveal to us through the will, the power of our uh, renewed will, spirit-filled will that God has given us. But let's just look right quick at Philippians 2.13. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. It is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. So right here at the beginning, before we go any farther in this series, I want us to engage right here by faith that God is working in me. God is working in me. Grab this by faith. My will. I want a fully functional will that God is working in me for his good pleasure. So let's all close our eyes right now. We grab this by faith. The will that God has given me is engaged and turned on because God is working in me to will and to do for his good pleasure pleasure. And on top of that, we say this is coming up to a new level. So I receive this according to this scripture by faith right now that the power of the Holy Spirit is filling me and my will is coming up to a brand new place in him. Come on, before you know all the nuts, bolts, and details, let's just receive it by faith right now. Right now. Right now, no, I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to bow down to the will of the flesh. I'm going to come up into the will of the Holy Spirit, into a new place, into a brand new level in him. In Jesus name, we receive. Do y'all receive that? The human will is a powerful thing, a very powerful thing. We are born uh, how many have children in here? Almost immediately after they learn dad, dad, it's mine, right? Mine, mine. The, the power of the human will, we, uh, we had a true story. Uh, Lexi, I'm going to use you as an example this morning. Uh, we, Lexi, we would always dread going to birthday parties when she was a toddler. I mean, it was embarrassing. I don't know what it was about her. Every time one of these kids, we go to a birthday party, they would start opening up their presents. She would start screaming and crying because she wanted the presents. And as parents, we're like, no, no, she's really, she's excited for them. She just, we don't know exactly. It's a disorder. We were looking into it. She wants everybody's stuff. It's just mine, mine, mine. But what a picture. It's so true. The human will. We are born saying, mine. I want my will. I want my way. I want it the way I want it, how I want it right now. I mean, that's even a tagline for Burger King, is it not? Right now, have it your way with Burger King now. I mean, that's what Lexi wanted, and that's what most of us want as well. We want mine. We want it now. It's that power of the human will, and we are born with that. We're born with that. You think throughout history, 
Speaking of the power of the human will, someone like Hitler on the darker side of this, right? I mean, so driven with a will to just completely extinguish the Jewish, Jewish people, uh, demonically for sure, but was so driven with a will to do this, he was able to actually get nations to follow him. What, a, what an amazing thought. The human will. Someone like Einstein, you could think of Einstein and uh, Albert Einstein was such a brilliant man and so driven to learn and discover. And they said that started, he said it started as a child when he was given some magnets. He was so mesmerized by uh, what a magnet can do that it caused him to want to learn. It drove him to want to learn and discover. This is something that I felt about Einstein. Einstein wasn't a genius. Einstein was one of the most methodically motivated human beings who ever lived. Isn't that wild? His success came from first discovering what most motivated him and second from remaining devoted to pursuing his motivations. Einstein came up with ideas that changed the world because he spent nearly his entire life learning about what intrinsically motivated him. But at the base of that is this will. He was driven. Have you ever met someone driven? My dad was a driven man. Like, if he got an idea in his mind, he was going to drive it until it was dead. You know what I'm saying? And on the converse, have you ever met somebody with just no drive? Come see, come saw. I mean, whatever. Whatever you want. I mean, whatever life brings at me and... uh, But we are all created with an inside human will that the Lord wants to harness for his benefit. The men and women of history that we remember and talk about today are people that had a strong will. We didn't see the beginnings of that, but we talk about the results of that today. I think about often the uh, first American settlers the pilgrims and the people who came over on the Mayflower and all those things. I don't have all the history for you this morning, but (laughs) I think of it often because what did it take for a group of people to be so driven? And, And really what it was, they were fleeing religious persecution. They wanted the freedom to be able to worship God the way that they wanted to worship God and not the state to tell them how they were going to worship, what church they were going to worship in. That desire and that drive, and no doubt driven by the Holy Spirit himself, today we have credit for what we are living in today, one of the freest nations on the earth today, birthed out of that kind of drive. I wonder if Christians today would have made that trek across the Atlantic over to the United States and and all that they had to go through through that. Anyway, I just think of that a lot, the drive, the will. But God wants to use your human will. Sometimes we wrongly think that God wants to remove our will. He doesn't want to remove our will. He wants to sanctify it so that he can use it. He wants us to submit to his will so that our will is actually usable for him. But he doesn't want to get rid of it. The drive of life is this will, is this human will. We have what's called free will. We have a free will. And unless we yield that will to him, we're not going to be usable to him. But it is a free will. It's yours to use. You know, God does not come and take over your will. If you're waiting for God to come and just take you and make you think and do what he wants you to think and do, we have to yield our will to him. But in yielding our will to him, there is great power. There is a power to will and do on the level of what pleases him. Genesis uh, chapter 11 Verse 4, we see a picture of this. We're all really familiar with the Tower of Babel. Verse 4 says, They said, Come, let us build a city and a tower whose top reaches into the sky, and let us make a name for ourselves. So let me rewind for a second. The mind, the will, 
and the emotions is what makes up the soul. Do you know that? So your soul is made up of the mind, the will, and the emotions. We talk a lot about the mind, getting the mind right. We talk a lot about the emotions, make sure you're feeling the right thing. But we don't talk a whole lot about the will. But how many of you would believe that we need to get that will just as sanctified as the mind? We need to get our will just as sanctified as our emotions. We need to get that thing under control just as much. And the Bible talks about, i got a scripture for you, 1 Thessalonians. Now may God, the God of peace himself, sanctify you entirely. It's not enough that just two parts of you are sanctified. All three parts entirely. May your spirit and your soul and your body be kept complete without blame and unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we see the mind sees the big picture. The mind sees the what, if you will. The emotions tell us why it's important. Like why is the big, the, the emotions is that part that we, we have to feel that in our heart, right? It's you are born with emotions. you got to get your emotions under control. But don't think that God wants you to be a robot. He just wants you to feel the right things, right? So the mind gives us that big picture of what? The emotions is that part of us that reminds us of why this is all important. But the will is what gets us there. The will is what drives us there. You can have, see the big picture. You can be one of those revelation people. You just love the revelation. You can even maybe understand why. But short of a will that will take you there, you're nothing but a pile of good information. (laughs) We've got to have the application before we have transformation. Amen? And that's what's involved in the wheel. So let's go now to Genesis 11. We're going to see a bit, a picture in the Old Testament. They said, come let us build a city and a tower whose top reaches into the sky. That's the big picture. That's the mind, right? That's the what. What is it? We want to build a big city. That top, it reaches all the way into the sky. And let us make a name for ourselves. This right here is their reason why. It's a bad reason. (laughs) It's a bad reason. All bad reasons usually point back to me. (laughs) It's a bad reason. They wanted to make a name for themselves. But it was their why. And unless we be scattered over the whole earth, verse 5, and the Lord came down, the Lord came down. To see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. Whoa. This was so impressive that the Lord himself came down to check it out. Verse 6 says, The Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. And now nothing they have imagined they can do will be impossible for them. Now, this is a powerful message for a unified church, is it not? But this language sounds a whole lot like what we read in the New Testament concerning faith. To those who believe, nothing shall be impossible to them. But this is a bunch of people that's not relying on the Word of God, relying on God. They just have this will and this determination to accomplish what it is. And they all had one voice, one language. God said, I'm going to have to separate this whole thing up because if not, they're going to do whatever they imagine to do. Unsanctified. Not in the will of God. Not in the plan of God. How much more? Can those of us who yield ourselves to his will, to his mind, to his way, to his big picture, his big plan, would he want to feel and use our will to accomplish that purpose unto his pleasure? Nothing that we can imagine would be impossible to us. And I know this year, boy, that word last week, breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. What a word. Did y'all receive that? Harvest with an exclamation point. 
and a year of the expressions of the Father's love. You know what that is? He's going to be doing good things for his children to express his love. But I believe this is not a mistake. We're starting out here with being driven by a Holy Spirit-filled will. There are some things that God puts right in front of us, Brother Sean. He even shows us directions and gets us there, but we can't get up off of the sofa to pursue it. There's some callings God is going to start reminding us about, because I believe a lot of people have heard callings, purposes. Hearing it's not enough. Seeing it is not enough. Having the heart of it in itself, knowing the why, that's great. But we actually have to have a will and a drive to get up and do it. Get up and make it happen. Amen? But that doesn't mean we got to bootstrap it. That just means we got to get so full of the Holy Ghost, we get our will in line and sanctified with Him. Amen? I feel like y'all are hanging on this morning. Imagine what God can do with a people who align their will with His will. Today, we're going to work on getting a revelation of God working in and through a yielded will. If you are already there, we're going to go to Romans 8. I'm going to show you this morning a little bit of a process. Um, This follows all spiritual growth. If you throw that process of spiritual growth. uh, And we're going to course through this as we go along this, uh, go along with this topic This is going to be some teaching for understanding. It's going to be some preaching for truth so that we can latch on to it by the Spirit. But all spiritual growth follows pretty much this same example here. We start with revelation power. That's positional. We have to start with a revelation from the Word of God. The way that God downloads His truth to us is by revelation. That's revealed knowledge. That's not knowledge that you just learned in a classroom somewhere. That's by the Spirit of God. It is revealed unto you. This morning as you're sitting here, no doubt you are receiving some revelation. That is positional. If you want to imagine salvation, when you got born again, you got a revelation that Jesus died for your sin, that you got born again right there. It took you from where you were and put you into another position. Y'all remember that? I was one way before Jesus. I was another way after Jesus, if it happens right. (laughs) Amen? I was born again. Born again. Something brand new. That's positional. That's also an identity. So, Revelation brings that positional experience and it brings an identifier in your life. So we also do that with every spiritual principle, exactly with the will of man. We're going to get a revelation and start this morning on revelation power of the will of God being sanctified, our will being sanctified to His will. The next level of this, which we're probably going to get to next week, is resurrection power. So we are not meant to do it by our own strength. We do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. We walk it out by His power. That's resurrection power. That's also practical. That's where we don't just have a mental understanding of it, but we're starting to apply it and massage it into our life in a practical sense. I'm walking this thing out with Him. His power is working it. That's why it's relationship. That power, that resurrection power comes as a result of relationship. And then the next level of it is representative power. That's when I take what I've received as my identity and the practical part from my relationship with him, and I begin to affect the world around me. Then God can use me to touch and move and step out into my calling. Amen? That's effectual power, and that lines up with our Purpose. Now, you could take any topic and it's going to follow the same, the same uh, thing. You could take love. If you want to start working on having more of the love of God, well, it starts with a revelation. 
then it's got to continue with the resurrection power, the relationship with the Holy Spirit. And then God will want you to start moving out and stepping out and operating and functioning in that love. Amen? So we're starting with Romans chapter 8. I don't know how far we'll get because it's 1155. So I'll try to abbreviate it. I didn't realize what time it was. (laughs) But we'll get as far as the Holy Spirit wants us to get because this morning we're talking about the first step is a changed will. So the first step is a changed will. A changed will. I'm not going to read through Romans 8 where we're going to read 15 scriptures this morning. I believe y'all can handle reading the word of God in church. Amen. But because of time's sake, we're going to have to just abbreviate it. But that's your homework. Go home and read all of Romans chapter 8. Read it in several different translations. The first part is I give my will to Christ. I give my will to Christ. We must answer Do I belong to Christ or do I belong to myself? Don't let this be too simple. The longer I follow God, the more I realize the simple things are actually the most profound and powerful things. This scripture in Romans verse 2, it says, because you belong to him. Somebody say, because... You belong to him. The power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. Because you belong to him. Do I belong to Christ? Or do I belong to myself? Is he calling the shots in my life? Or am I calling the shots in my life? This is the beginning of a brand new changed will. Do we want a fully functional, powerful will? It starts with me giving over my will to Christ. And saying, Lord, my life is not my own. Well, Pastor Ryan, I've already been born again. Is that what you're talking about? Somewhat. Not just a prayer, but saying, God, whatever you want. What is it that you want? I'm not calling the shots of my life anymore. I belong to Jesus. Fear will never conquer me. I belong to Jesus. There's a strength. In fact, that scripture promises us right there. You are going to be filled with the life-giving spirit of God. Do you have a hard time uh, yielding and obeying God and obeying the word of God? Go back to this first central thing. Hold up. Is my life completely surrendered to him? Do I belong to Jesus? Do I belong to Jesus? That's the first step right there. That's the first step right there. I don't have time to keep going over it, but let's go over to to the next one. I receive a new will when I am in right standing with God. So the first part is I give my will to him. Then I get his will when I come into right standing with God. That is righteousness. Righteousness is being right with God. And what you believe about being right with God is going to determine a lot about your sanctified will. Am I right with God by how good I've been? Or am I right with God by how good Jesus is? By faith in what Jesus has accomplished. The only thing that makes me right with God is not me. It's him. It's his blood. It's his righteousness. I can't earn it. I can't be good enough and neither can you. And once you receive that by faith and once you're not warring anymore with your identity as a child of God, there comes this infusion of the life of God into your will. You don't struggle as much. I'm not yet trying to still figure out, do I but really belong to him? No, you receive it by faith. 
The next one is, I recognize that my will is susceptible to the sin nature. So even though I come to this place where I know I belong to Jesus, and then by faith I receive that I'm a child of God, I need to know that i got to keep that flesh on a short leash. And this is why we do 21-day fast. Our, old past, our former pastor used to say, it goes like this. You've got the flesh dog and the spirit dog. Whichever one you feed the most is the one that's going to be most strong in your life. And how do you know what you're feeding the most? The scripture is clear. Verse 5 in Romans says, those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. And the result is, if you're dominated by the sinful nature, you've got death all around you. Maybe not things and people dying, but you've just got no life. The opposite is, is if you're controlled by the Spirit, you have life and you have peace. How do I know what's stronger in my life? Well, the results are going to be clear. And I'm still susceptible, even though I'm a child of God, even though by faith I know I'm right with God, even though I know I belong to Jesus, I need to know that if I give an inch to the flesh, it's going to want to take a mile. We got to keep a short leash on that thing. The flesh is a real thing. The sin nature is a real thing. I'm not in fear over it, but I do have to keep that in check. The Bible says that all sin is common to man. That's why you ought not judge people. Anything anybody else does, if you've given your flesh, if you give it the right amount of space, you can do anything anybody else has done. It's just flesh. There's nothing new under the sun. The last one is I transform, as Andrew comes, my will as I continually yield to the Holy Spirit. And we're going to get deeper into that next week. We were never meant to live life unplugged from the power. Never meant to live unplugged from power. We're meant to live plugged in at all times to the power of the Holy Spirit. The scripture here says, verse 13, through the power of the Spirit, we put to death the deeds of the sinful nature and we live. Let me, listen to the amplified version. If, according, if you live according to the dictates of the flesh, you will die. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit, you are habitually putting to death, listen to this word, making extinct the evil deeds prompted by the body, you shall really and genuinely live forever. I know those here that have been serving the Lord a long time, you look back to what you were before you knew Jesus. Doesn't it seem like a different person? Doesn't it seem like who was that person? You know what that means? That means that old person that was made extinct. That person doesn't even exist anymore. Isn't that awesome? And that's what the power of the Holy Spirit does in our life when we continually yield to His will with our will. He can make those old ways like they never even happened. In fact, the Bible says he cast our sin as far as the east is from the west. Never to remember them again. But greater than that, the pull of that thing in your life is extinct. Dead. As we yield to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this morning, we're getting a vision and a revelation of our will yielded to His will. And with every eye closed this morning, I just feel like we need to recommit starting our 21-day fast tomorrow. Lord, I give my will to You. First and foremost, I belong to Jesus. Come on, everyone in the building. I know we got places to go and things to do. This may not sound like some great revelation, but when was the last time you've checked with Him? 
When was the last time we've checked on His will, His way? My life is not my own. I have given my life to Christ. It belongs to Him. Don't let that be too simple. So we start off right now, this brand new year, saying, Lord, I belong to you. I belong to Jesus. And then secondly, Lord, I'm not doing it in my own strength. I'm not going to do it in my own power. But I do it through your power, through the power of the Holy Spirit. I know that I'm right with God by what Jesus did. And the Spirit of God will fill my will because of that. Amen. And then we stay continually filled with the Holy Spirit. Yielding to the Holy Spirit. And this is really the one I wish we had a lot more time to talk about. So come back next week because we're going to talk about that resurrection power and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Those of you following the Lord, you already know how to do that. You already know how to do that. Just stay tapped in. Stay plugged into the power of the Holy Spirit. And as we start this 21-day fast, that's our marching orders. To stay yielded to Him. Stay aware to Him. Open to His voice. Open to His Word. It's not just what we're taking away. It's what we're adding in. We're adding in more time with Him. More time for Him. And this isn't a works thing. This is a yielding thing. I don't know about you, but I don't want to show up to heaven and see all the things that I could have done if I'd have just gotten my will in check. With all the revelation knowledge that I've received, all the amazing preachers I've sat under, all of the things that I, I understand, I even get the why. But the last thing I want is a broken down will that's not able to function at the maximum capacity that God has called me to function at. That's able to yield. That's able to obey at a moment's notice. Go here. Do that. Say this. Release that word. Pray for that person. It starts with these little simple things here in the beginning. My life is not my own. I yield to you, Holy Spirit. I open myself up to you. Let's stand on feet this morning.